I'm Peter Cetera, and I'm here in Salt Lake City at KJAZZ. Please don't assume there's going to be a grand retard in bar 71. We're actually here in Salt Lake to, uh, to rehearse for tomorrow night's show with an orchestra and with uh, my own plug group. This is about the fourth or fifth uh, uh, concert in a series that I that started with the PBS show last year. And um, we're here to rehearse today and teach these lovely people to go over the songs. Three and four and boom. I want to charge right ahead. Mistake three, hopefully. <laughs> Hey there, I'm Arnie Roth, and I'm the conductor for Peter Cetera and Symphony. Get ready for Peter Cetera. You know, the group that plays with Peter, we affectionately refer to as the Bad Daddies. <laughs> but this is the uh, four pieces that travel with us. It's um, one, one is a singer, Kim, who will also play some percussion. She'll be over in this position. Um, Jean will play a little bit of guitar and sing as well. Uh, Bruce Gage on guitar, primary guitar player, and uh, Tony Harrell on piano and keyboards. And uh, Peter's in the center station here. I'm on this podium here, including the rhythm section, everything, it's 50 pieces. Uh, not including the singers. We've got 44 in the local orchestra and the four pieces here, two background singers, Peter, so about 50. All right, ready, six. Five, give me applause, five. Ready, five, take five. Ready, six, take six.
me by surprise You're someone I've needed for a lifetime Your heart was cleverly disguised Didn't look that way for my mind Tell me how could it be I was the last of them I couldn't read what was in your mind Salt Lake City. Finally made it back. I, uh, I really hate to play dumps like this, but... Anyhow, I have a news flash. The Cubs just won the pennant. I'm hurting. Not really. Anyhow, excuse me. We are going to play uh, <clears throat> a bunch of songs tonight. We're going to have uh, two sets, intermission, in between. And we're going to play songs from, from uh, my solo album and from my years with Chicago. <laughs> and as you can see, we are filming this show. This is for, where is Peter Cetera now? This is one of, one of these specials. Casey Kasem, I think, is going to do this. Right before my very eyes I thought I 
that hill will roll it, faking it. And like before, my heart was taking it. Baby, what a big surprise! Right before my very eyes. Oh. Yesterday, it seemed to me. Was nothing more than wasted time. Here today, you softly changed my mind. Baby, what a big surprise! Right before my very eyes. Baby, what a big surprise! Then she came to stay Hold me in the morning Love me in the afternoon Help me find my way Faking it, and like before, my heart was taking it. Baby, what a big surprise! Right before my very eyes. Baby, what a big surprise! Thank you. You know, not, not uh, used to living in this area, I'm so dry. I live about 250 miles away, actually up in Idaho, and I have a lot of, a lot of dear friends. There, 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 hello, hello. And a lot of friends from Salt Lake and from Utah as well. So. This was in a movie. Um, actually, I wrote this song. Excuse me. Uh, I wrote this song for um, uh, the Rocky movie, where he fights the Russian. Remember that movie? And uh, we changed a few words, and we put, it, put the song in Karate Kid. <laughs> Tonight it's very clear As we're both lying here There's so many things I want to say I will always love you I will never leave you alone Sometimes I just forget to say things I might regret. Breaks my heart to see you cry. I don't want to lose you. I could never make it alone. Oh 
You keep me standing tall You help me through it all I'm always strong when you're beside me I have always needed you I could never make it wrong That is Mr. Arnie Roth conducting the orchestra, Arnie. And Arnie Roth from Chicago. And now, this is like the Arnie Roth Big Band Orchestra, right? Yes. So please welcome. This uh, this is my this is my band. Where did I get an accent? <laughs> this is my band. They are called the Bad Daddies. Uh, we were having rehearsals in Nashville, and uh, <clears throat> we all brought our youngest, three lovely children running around eating donuts, and so we thought we were pretty bad daddies. Mr. Tony Harrell on piano. Tony. Mr. Bruce Geich, Mr. Guitar. Mr. Gene Miller, Mr. Guitar. And Ms. Kim Keys. Here's an old song.
How could we end it all this way when tomorrow comes and we both regret the thing we said to Thank you. You are very kind. I, um, <clears throat> I had a duet out years ago with uh, somebody called uh, Cher. That was her name, I think. And uh, she was going to be here tonight, but she had to rearrange her sock drawer or something. I don't know what she, what she said. <laughs> yeah. So please welcome Miss Kim Keys playing the part of uh, Sheridan sure Knight. And I, oh, I see. Oh. <laughs> Who needs Cher?
This is meant to be Forever you and me After all When love is truly right This time it's truly right It lives from year to year It changes as it grows It's meant to be forever you and me After all the stops and stop We keep coming back to these two hearts Two angels who have been rescued from the fall After all that we've been through It all comes down to me and you I guess it's meant to be Right now, I'm going to introduce Mr. Matt Larson, who is going to join us on this little ditty right here. Matt, no pressure. No. He was smoking it. Yeah, I see you're nervous. Right. I want you to stay I'll be damned if I'm living without you For as long as I live, you will know Well, I want to build a wall around you Don't want you to go Don't leave me here with my restless heart What you feel with emotion, baby Right from the start 
living without you For as long as I live, you will know Wanna build my world around you Don't want you to go Don't leave me here with my restless heart One you feel with emotion, baby Right from the start Thank you. We're going to do one more song, take a little intermission. And this last song of the first set uh, was the uh, first song I uh, ever had in a movie. And, and it, was in the world, it wasn't an A movie, and it, well, it wasn't really a B movie. It was, well, it wasn't those kind of movies either. No, no. no. <laughs> It was a lousy movie, I think, called Summer Lovers. And, uh, see? Who? Nobody? See? What? Summer Lovers? What? Summer Lovers, Daryl Hannah, I don't know. And I was so happy that this was the first song that was ever in a movie. And when I saw them towards the end of the movie, I was re really excited. And when the song started, they superimposed a motorcycle right over the whole song. So, <laughs> you're going to hear it without the motorcycle tonight. say from each other even love need a holiday far away from each other hold me now it's hard for me to say I'm sorry I just want you to stay After all that we've been through I will make it up to you I promise to After all that's been said and done You're just a part of me I can't let go Just for the day From your body Wouldn't want to be swept away Far away from the one that I love Ooh, It's hard for me to say I'm sorry Just a part of me 
Once again, that's Mr. Arnie Roth. That's what his charts are now.
That's Kip Keys again.
Once again, Mr. Tony Harrell on the piano. Bruce, Bruce Geitz on the guitar. I, uh, I, 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 no. <laughs> yes. I did a PBS special a while back. A while back. There goes my accent again. A while back. <laughs> I did a PBS special a while back, and uh, I happened to be talking to Bill Chaplin, who is with Chicago. And uh, he said, well, are you going to do that song that we wrote? And I said, what song would that be? You know, I, I forgot about this song. And so I went back on Chicago 17. And there was, but I'm not going to do that one. Uh, no. <laughs> No, just teasing. So I went back on Chicago 17 and I looked and, you know, sure enough, here was a song that I totally forgot about. And uh, mainly because we never did it live. Of course, we didn't have a 50-piece orchestra to do it live. So, yeah. So this is one called Remember the Feeling. <laughs> Shadows behind it, what I couldn't see Out in the dark, she was calling to me Calling to me with a voice I never forget She was a vision I couldn't believe I held her close so that she wouldn't leave Suddenly hopeless Hopelessly falling in love I remember the feeling I remember the way She came up and wrapped her arms around me Told me that she cared Said she'd always be there Taking the places I've never been she has a beauty that comes from within Was I just dreaming? Was it too good to be true?
You would think if you had the words, you'd sing them. I like that. Thank you. I have a lot of dear friends here from Idaho. Hello to you all. Hello to all my friends from Salt Lake and from Utah and from uh, Poughkeepsie. I think we have somebody from Poughkeepsie. Where? Sorry. <laughs> Just teasing about that, I love California.
Well, well, excuse me. We, uh, in this PBS special we did, Amy Grant was there with us. Sitting in for Amy Grant tonight. <laughs> it's not Gene Miller. Next time I fall. song for you right now, but we changed our mind. (laughs) 
know our love was meant to be the kind of love to last forever and now aren't you here with me from tonight till the end of time you should know everywhere I go always on my mind in my heart in my soul baby you're the meaning in my life you're the inspiration bring feeling to my life you're the inspiration wanna have you near me wanna have you hear me say no one needs you more than I need you and I know yes I know that it's plain to see to see to see we're so Now I know that I need you here with me From tonight until the end of time You should know Everywhere I go Always on my mind In my heart, in my soul Baby, you're the me Thank you. Oh no. Thank you, thank you. Don't forget, if you're really good, you'll get on camera. He's all oh, sit down. All right. Get it out of your system. You got to get it out of your system. Okay, well, I guess that's it. Bye. Well, play it again. We have time for one more, and we're going to do a very special one for you right now. Uh, let me see. I don't think I'll say anything. So there you go. 
Thank you. Waiting for the break of day Searching for something to say Flashing lights against the sky Giving up, I close my eyes Sitting cross laying down the floor Six to Thank you.
In the morning light Half awake and half asleep Have you ever laid there thinking Was all a dream But you reach out and she's there Every moment, everywhere Have you ever been in love? Have you ever felt How far a heart can fall? Have you ever stayed up waiting For a telephone call Just to hear you say hello Cause you miss each other so Have you ever been in love? Have there been time to laugh? Time you really want to cry Finding reasons to believe it Cause you die and little if she lied When in time of doubt Have you ever tried to work it out? And still she leaves you under what it's all about And when she's far away Have you ever felt the need to stray Trying and then discover It just doesn't pay Cause with her you can be true And with her you can be you Have you ever been in so much. Thank you. Good night.
you have been uh, the best audience we've ever had. And uh, hopefully we'll come back next year. Thank you and good night. Thank you. The bass is Peter Cetera. How are you? Hi. Hi there. Hi there. Peter. How are you? How are you? Peter. How are you? Since this isn't a, a a stop and go TV show where we can take the time to move you, I, I might just leave you here. Uh, but feel free to get in there and uh, you know, kind of flow with it as best you can. And uh, you will be heard. 
That's my mark my word. The basses shall be heard. <laughs> yes, we will turn them up. Peter, so you were here decorating too. That's right. That's <laughs> exactly. That's what, that's what my yard looks like up, up in Idaho, up in uh, Nashville. Can you decorate? Uh, yeah, oh, in the yard I have a skeleton. And stuff all you know, over the place. there's this house around the corner. They've got old tombstones. Yeah. They've got like ten tombstones, and they all say something like, you know, weird stuff. Every year, man, every year they put them out. I and love it. They do it. the cobwebs. I love they it. They do everything. I'm like, how? I wish I could find the time to do that. And then they pack it away. Well, and they add another tombstone. It's getting year. it. That's, it's what, like, that's the I'll hard part. Dead. Yeah. Oh, jeez. So, crazy stuff. He's that's. Got, he's got one. Rest in pieces. Rest in pieces. That's pretty good. The end of bar 60. You should have a cut penciled in. I believe all the parts are right. This cuts to bar 75. Fermata on the third beat of bar or fourth beat, let's say, of bar. 78, that's Fine. Okay, everybody have that? Sorry, I'm gonna have my back. <laughs> you, you'll be okay, you'll be all right, you'll be okay. She's asking the lead solo is not I know, I know. <laughs> we want you to sing. Your name? Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Peter Sattel. There he is, right here. Is he here? Has he come in? It's too late, the cat's out.
am I, you ask? Well, I'm Peter Cetera, and I'm here in Salt Lake City at KJazz. Uh, we are, we're actually here in Salt Lake to uh, rehearse for tomorrow night's show with, uh, with an orchestra and with uh, my unplugged group. And we're, this is about the fourth or fifth uh, uh, concert in a series that I that started with the PBS show last year. And um, we're here to rehearse today and teach these lovely people to go over the songs without mistake free, hopefully. Why, why an orchestra? Why an orchestra, you ask? Because of, you know, I, I did a thing about a year ago with uh, some friends of mine, David Foster and Celine Dion, and uh, with an orchestra in Chicago for uh, McDonald's Corporation. And, uh, you know, I, I put together a medley of about three or four songs. And David uh, had string charts and orchestra charts for him, and it was so much fun. And it was the first time back in Chicago, and it was the first time that I, in, in years, and it was the first time I had sung with a symphony. I, I think I'd done it before, but I, I don't quite remember when it was. And it was a spectacular feeling, and uh, somebody brought up the possibilities of, uh, well, would you ever consider going on the road and doing this? And I said, no. Oh, I, I, I did, actually, because, you know, the, it seemed like so much work, and it was a lot of work. And in the end, it's been so rewarding. And, uh, you know, the orchestra adds a kind of a different dimension. And we're doing it unplugged, without electric guitars and basses and drums, which took me, you know, a little bit, a little bit getting used to. How is that for you as an artist? And you can talk about whatever specific songs you want, but number one songs, top ten songs, whatever. But how does that feel for you to, to hear the song and that vibe instead of like, you know, producing a studio and actually having all the strings as opposed to synth strings or whatever you may have in the studio? Or... You know, I, I, I have no problem with synth, synth strings at all. There, you, 99 you know, percent of the people and, and musicians can't even tell really. And it's, it, but when you're singing live, to sing with an orchestra, it's it's it brings a whole other depth to to songs that I've I've done before, and you know of course the you know the ballad things are were made for an orchestra. Some of the up tempo things I'm I'm finding out with with the right orchestration have been a lot of fun to do also. What's your what's your routine that you do for these gigs that may be different or similar? So your routine day of day before. Or, you know, doing you know a regular rock and roll show. Kind of. Well, you know, with this, the thing that makes this very difficult is that, you know, even though these people are are professionals, you know, and they're looking at charts, they're they're basically looking at charts that they've never played for the first time. I mean, it's like you know, an orchestra is used to, you know, Beethoven and Rachmaninoff and this and that, but they're not used to the songs that we're doing. So in effect, it is new to them for the first time. Tempos and different, and different way of. Uh, so we have to go through a total run through, uh, the day of the show, and in some cases the day before the show, from start to finish, of tempo and feeling and that 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 that, that you would never have if you have just a, a group in per se. And uh, I was telling somebody the the difference between being a soul. Being, you know, having your tight knit group and having the orchestra is uh, the difference between driving a, a a Formula One car you can do instantaneous and driving a, a semi truck, which when you turn you got to wait for that thing to. That's what that's what it is, you know, with this orchestra. It's uh, you got to wait for the mass, you know, and it's uh, it's been an experience, but it's been fun. Let's talk about some of your some of your hits. Do you ever just and have you throughout your career, solo career, band career? Do you ever just wake up in the middle of the night and go, oh my god? I wake up always in the middle of the night and go, oh my god, with or without being on the road. I, you know, I. I mean, I've been lucky. You know, I I I had enormous success with Chicago, and then I had basically my second career as a solo artist since 1985 and uh, you know I I'm not one to go out a lot and travel a lot and tour a lot and, and um, when the orchestra thing came along it was 
it was unique enough that it it got my curiosity enough that I wanted to try and see what it was like. And um, I, I'm pretty lucky to uh, to be doing the songs with a with an orchestra like that. Yeah. Is this almost kind of like a third career? One career with Chicago, one yeah. career as a solo artist, and then some guys go out and do standards. But now you're doing this. And I'm gonna. Of... <laughs> well, I'm gonna go out and do stand up after this. No. <laughs> No, it's not really a third career. It's it's just a it's just a phase in in in, in my solo career, and it's uh, you know with something like this, it's number one, it's it's hard to put together. We've I've been working a long time on this. I mean, it's obvious that I can't take 50 or so pieces with me. You know, I wish I could, but uh, so you have to pick them up in different towns and different symphonies. It's a lot of work. Uh, I don't know how much how much more of this there is. I don't know. We'll see next year what where we go with this. You know, I may go back to a, you know adding a you know bass guitar and a, you know some drums and taking the band out. So we'll see. With all the number one hits you had and all the chart topping hits throughout your career, does that put more pressure on? Or has it put more, more pressure on you throughout your career to kind of like? Okay, I got a number one. Great, it's what I've always wanted. But now I got to get another one and then another one. Yeah. You know, at, at, this is kind of a changing times now. I mean, back when singles were king, and singles are still important, but, I, you know, I don't think you ever, you would like to have a hit. I don't think I ever consciously went, I have got to write the next number one song. I think what I always thought was, I'm going to write a song, and I tried to write the best song I could write, and if it happened to be a, a hit, well, then that's great. You know? What's your favorite song? I, I don't have a favorite song. I, I, somebody asked me that question the other day, and it's, they're, in a way, and this is very, you know, this is a cliche, it's, they are sort of like your children. You love them all for different reasons. Uh, so I don't really have a favorite. Certain songs mean, mean certain things. Uh, you know, If You Leave Me Now was, was actually the first number one song that Chicago had, really, and it was a number one worldwide when uh, when I was with Chicago we, we we were landing to do a European tour we landed in London about six in the morning and we heard top of the pops was on and with the with the number one song and it was if you leave me now so that song is special because of that thing glory of love was because it, it was a Academy Award uh, nomination and it was in uh, uh, Karate Kid 2 and uh, it was like uh, you know, the first song that I had as a solo artist that came out with a number one song. That's important to me too, you know. But there's a lot of songs that weren't hits that were on, on CDs and uh, they're just as important to me as, as the number one song. Um, you're the inspiration. You're the inspiration. I actually wrote that song, or I started writing that song for Kenny Rogers. Remember him? He was uh, looking for a song and he, I was working with David Foster at the time, and I got the word looking for a song, and we we wrote, um, actually David Foster called me up and he said, you know, I'm in the studio with Kenny Rogers, and he would like you to write a song for him. I said, you know, that's great. I said, as a matter of fact, I'm leaving for Italy. I was, you know, I was going to Europe for something, I don't remember. This was like nine o'clock in the morning. I said, I'm leaving for Italy tonight about five o'clock. I'll be there about two weeks. I'll call you when I come back. He goes, no, 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 he, he means like now. And I went, oh, oh, he means now. Well, yeah, why? Well, thank you. <laughs> and so David was in the studio, and of course, you know, last minute. And so I said, all right, well, you come over here right now, and we'll see what we can do. So in the midst of packing, David drove out to where I was then living. And we basically, in about three hours, came up with a, a little portal structure for You're the Inspiration, which it wasn't called that at the time. And we sort of make this little tape of this chord structure. I took it on the plane, went to Italy, and of course lying in these beautiful Baroque and marble and the rooms and seeing it out the window. I, I was writing things about uh, Michelangelo. You should know Michelangelo. And I, that's, and I came up with, oh, you're the inspiration. La, 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 la. Came back with the words, worked on this melody, and came back and uh, presented the song. And uh, he basically didn't either have the time or didn't didn't want to do it. Good for me. 
So I sort of changed a couple of the words, made it a little more generic, not so Italianish, Italianish or whatever that word would be, if there was a word like Italianish. Sounds and uh, Swedish. Yeah, Swedish. <laughs> and so you're the inspiration. Hard for me to say I'm sorry. Hard to say I'm sorry was a uh, was the first song that I had uh, in a movie. Wrote that song, came up with that melody and title and the words. And, with, uh, and then I, I got a call and somebody was looking for a song and they, they took Hard to Say I'm Sorry. And I was so impressed. Wow, it's going to be in a movie, my first movie song. Well, it turned out to be a, a B movie. Well, maybe a C or a D movie. Summer Lovers, that was called. And they used it at the end of the, at the, end of the movie. And just as the song comes on, I, uh, when I saw the preview of the movie, just as the song comes on, a motorcycle noise is superimposed over the start of the song, totally rendering any life out of it. So that was my first experience with movies. No explanation. No explanation was a song I, did, I didn't write. I just uh, I got a call from David Foster. He had written a song, and it was going to be in the, in the movie, uh, the movie, Richard Gere. I can pretty see it, Pretty Woman. <laughs> Movie for the uh, Pretty Woman soundtrack. That's about my is my it, extent. Is it kind of an extra kick in the ass for an artist that when your song ends up in a movie or someone says we want to put your song in a film or a song that you performed or wrote? Yeah, you know, having a song in a movie uh, is a lot more work than it appears to be, and uh, but it, but it is. I mean, of course, it's a kick because those you know movies go on and, and your song is always tied with that particular. Uh, and, you know, vice versa. Percy Vicey. After all, it was a song I, I got a call from uh, Cher's management. At the time, she was doing a, uh, her new album, and I guess somebody had promised her the song was going to be in a movie, and, and I was like the hired gun on that one. Let's see, Cher and a duet. Who should we get? Peter Cetera. So I, we went in, and literally that song was... That song was recorded and out uh, in the shortest I've, song I've ever been associated with. That song was literally recorded and out probably within a month on the charts, number one on the uh, you know on the charts and in the movie called Chances Are. Cool. Next time I fall. I uh, I have a friend uh, called Bobby Caldwell who's uh, very famous in his own right and a fabulous fabulous singer and fabulous songwriter and he. I, uh, that was one of the songs that he showed to me, and, and I listened to it, and I really loved the song. <clears throat> and at the time, and for some reason, I just thought, you know, if we changed a few words here and there, we could make a duet out of this. And I came up with the, with the concept. I called Bobby back, and he, I, he said, wow, fine, go ahead if that's what you want to do. So, changed a couple of words, started looking for a duet partner, and, uh, you know, they're going through the, you know, and it has to... It's something about when they mentioned Amy Grant, I, I knew of course who she was from her from her uh, the previous work, and I thought that was a good call on that song. Uh, it's still a classic. Feels like Heaven was like another song that I uh, that uh, Mark Mark Goldenberg and Kid Hain, friends of mine from a while back, wrote a song, and uh, it's another song that I always wanted to do and. I heard possibilities of a duet in there. And the, you know, once again, it's just a very simple kind of changing a couple of things. Sometimes it works. And this one did, and it's, you know, then you start that, well, uh, who are we going to get? Who's, who can vibe this song up to me? And uh, when I was with the record company, I was with, I mentioned Shaka Khan. And since Shaka Khan is from Chicago, and so am I. No, it was, uh, she, uh, she came in and, you know, you know, we had a blast. We did a video for it, and that, that was the number one hit as well. Remember the feeling, uh, I was talking to Bill Champlin, who is still with Chicago all these years, I mentioned to him that I was going to do an orchestra thing, and uh, he said to me, you know what, why don't you do Remember the Feeling? And I said, what's that? He goes, what's that? It's a song you and I wrote. It's on Chicago 17. And I had totally forgot it because we never did it live. And when I put the song on, it was like made for orchestra. So I had to relearn the song that I wrote. And um, it, it actually works fabulous in show. One Good Woman. One Good Woman. 
You know, I, I hate to keep on this movie thing, but they, uh, I think it was Penny Marshall or somebody called up my then management looking for a song for the motion picture big, Tom Hanks. So they showed me the script, they showed me snippets of the thing, and I wrote One Good Woman with the fortune teller and everything. And you know, I just, I guess I'm a little sour when it comes to movies because they always appear to make the music their last. Oh, we need music. We need music. How much of that budget is left? You know, oh, 1%? Plenty. So they always make music to me their, their kind of last call. We got into a little, uh, you know, a little problem with that. And I pulled the song and, uh, you know, and doggone right too because that movie didn't do anything. Did it? <laughs> Big? Didn't do too bad. No, it didn't do too bad. 25 or 6 to 4. Well, 25 or 64, of course, is one of the old Chicago songs that I choose to include in this show. And, uh, you know, Robert Lamb was, was one of the great songwriters of, the, you know, of, of that generation, and I always respected his writing, and I wanted to pay a little tribute to him and, of course, to the group, and came up with a kind of what I think is a unique version of an old classic. So what does Peter Cetera do when he's not singing? with his family, watching a Cubs game. <laughs> Don't even mention the Cubs. <laughs> you know, I, <clears throat> I know it's funny because we're here in Salt Lake, <clears throat> excuse me, and I live up in Ketchum, Idaho, Ketchum Sun Valley, Idaho, and i about 285 miles from here. And I do everything I can to be outside. I do, uh, you know, uh, I do everything that I wanted to do when I was on the road all those years. I do any kind of sport, you name it, I'll do it. And, uh, and of course, be with my family as much as possible, like, you know. And work uh, now is becoming important to me again, and it's, uh, it's finally fun again, so here I am. Oh, what, uh, I'm just looking to see what Artie's doing back there. Big difference, though, from the atmosphere in, in the city of Chicago, where, where you're living now. What, what's, such a contrast, right? I, well, when we uh, when I moved from Chicago to LA with Chicago, uh, and then in 1985 when I became a solo artist again, I had no reason to live in LA, and I, I wanted to raise my 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 oldest daughter, who was then two year, or a year and a half, two years old. I wanted to raise her somewhere far from the madding crowd, and uh, we ended up in Idaho. Any rock, ladies and gentlemen. Suddenly it's plain to see she doesn't need me. Even a fool can see nothing left between us. I knew all along something was wrong, but I did my best to deny. She wants to be alone So tell anyone who misses me I'm alright Even a fool can see Nothing more to talk about It's over when it's over In the end you both stop trying in the end, that's her, sir. 